Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we're going to be talking about cranial nerve number nine, the glossopharyngeal. And before we get into this video, I want to thank you so much for watching all these videos, leaving your comments, giving it a thumbs up, and if you can, subscribe. It's just great seeing this community growing over this year, and I'm really excited to keep moving forward with you guys. Let's get started now with glossopharyngeal. As we've been going through these lectures, we're looking at the type, the function, assessment, if that assessment has failed, and then what is the cause or possible risk factors that would make the nerve not work properly. So with the glossopharyngeal, the type is both. We have some motor and some sensory. And as we look at the diagram here of the glossopharyngeal nerve, we can see that we have the pons in the medulla oblongata, and we have the nerve coming on out. And it's got a couple different branches going to different areas. We can see that it's going to the parotid gland here. We can see that it's going down over into this area to these pharyngeal muscles. And then we can also see that it's coming down to the carotid to get some of those receptors. And we're going to go through really quickly and just mention all of the different types of functions. So the first one actually has to do with swallowing. The nerve plays a part in those pharyngeal muscles where it's able to elevate and move and allow the patient to swallow safely. So the first function is swallowing. The next function that we're going to look at here is we have the tongue, right? We have the ability to swallow, but we also have the parotid gland here. And with the parotid gland, we're looking at here is the function of salivation or saliva. So not only do we have the ability to swallow, but we also have the ability of salivation. Moving on with our functions in the motor category, the, they all kind of go together. So we have swallowing, right? The ability to make those muscles move and lift and swallow. Then we also have salivation, which is creating the saliva. We also have taste, right? And for taste, I like to remember this because we have the parotid and it's near the back of the tongue. So for in the um, glossopharyngeal nerve, we have taste at the posterior third of the tongue. And if we still keep in this realm of we're talking about swallowing, we're talking about tasting, we're talking about saliva, another important, and this is where on the NCLEX or on your nursing exams, you're going to use this assessment mainly for the glossopharyngeal to see if the glossopharyngeal is intact, and that's going to be the gag reflex. So now that we've mentioned here most of the motor components, we also have two kind of components, really one, they go together, that have to do with our sensory portion. The first one is going to be, or they're both going to be down here, but the first one I'm going to mention is the carotid sinus, and the carotid sinus has baroreceptors, baroreceptors that we use to help regulate our pressure, our blood pressure within our body. And along with baroreceptors within the carotid area within our carotid body, we have our chemoreceptors. And what does our chemoreceptors do? Chemoreceptors help us find out what the pH is, what the oxygen level is, what the CO2 level is within our blood. So when we look at the functions here, I just denoted in here that the baroreceptors are for our blood pressure and the chemoreceptors are for our pH, our O2, and our, our CO2. Just so a refresher so you don't have to look for that later. But when we see our functions here, we have swallowing, we have salivation, we have taste, gag reflex. And then we have this area in here that has to do with our blood. To test the glossopharyngeal, there's a couple different things that we're going to assess or look at to see if there is intact glossopharyngeal or if that nerve is good and we can move on to the next nerve in our assessment. Now, there's a couple different ones we can do here, but there is one that's typically the gold standard, which I mentioned before, that the nursing exams like you to hit on mostly. So with the assessment, the first thing we can do is the swallowing ability. The swallowing ability is when you can you know, watch the patient swallow or ask them, are you having any trouble swallowing? And if that answer is yes, you can also further go on to have them have a swallow study completed. The next thing that we can do is the taste sensation, just like we've done with other nerves. This is going to, again, be the posterior one-third. has to do more with sour, bitter tastes, but you can take the little bit of something sweet or something sour, put that on the back of the tongue, and see if they can taste it. Then the next one we're going to go into is the gag reflex, and this one is the one that you're going to typically use at bedside very, very quickly. And then if that's not intact, then we have other things to investigate as well. So the gag reflex is when we can take the tongue depressor, we're gonna go into the patient's mouth, press down the tongue, we're gonna ask them to say ah, we're gonna see the uvula jump up, and then we're going to apply a little bit further into the back of their throat and initiate that gag reflex. Patient should then have a gag reflex. 
And then the last one we have here is not typically one that we use for the glossopharyngeal, but I just wanted you to mention or wanted to mention here that we are going to be looking at their vitals when we're assessing our patient. And it's just something to take into consideration that if their blood pressure is off, is there something going on with the glossopharyngeal nerve or is there something else more so going on? So it's just something to take into consideration when we're assessing our patients at a whole. But remember, with the glossopharyngeal, the gold standard or the one that we're gonna typically use right at the bedside to get that quick assessment is the gag reflex. So now that we've seen all this, and we've looked at all this, we see that the glossopharyngeal does a lot of stuff right there, right in this small little area in the back of our mouth. What are some of the causes and the risk factors? And this goes just like any other nerve that we've talked about. It can be some sort of tumor or trauma. There's either compression, there could be inflammation, there could be infection with on that nerve. And because of that, then we're gonna see maybe a decrease in the gag reflex or something else going on where they're having an inability to swallow, their taste sensation is decreased, or their blood pressure is having some issues as well. So nothing really outstanding looking here, but we are just generally looking at this nerve and seeing are there any issues that we need to investigate further. And that is it, Ninja Nerds. That is the video here on glossopharyngeal. I hope you learned something from this. And as always, until next time.